SVP families or any other families who might be watching this video. Um, today I am in a new spot. I am coming to you from my kitchen instead of our classroom today, but I still wanted to show you some fun things that you can do at home. Um, and this is another example of a fine motor lesson. So these are things that you might have at home. Uh, you can do this lesson with Play-Doh. If you don't have Play-Doh, if you have some type of styrofoam uh, to secure either a pasta noodle, a toothpick, a skewer, something um, that we're going to be using to string beads on. Any of that will work. Um, I just happen to have Play-Doh here, so that's what I'm going to use today. So first what I'm going to do, we need to get our Play-Doh out. And you can really do this however you like. If you want to leave it as one big section of Play-Doh, that's fine. I'm just going to divide mine into two. If you have uh, more than one child, obviously dividing it is probably what you're going to do. Um, but I'm just going to split this Play-Doh up and make two little posts, if you will, on my table. Kind of just press those down. Hopefully you can see that. Now, uh, what I mentioned earlier of whatever material you want to use, this is up to you. You can do this with a spaghetti noodle, a dry spaghetti noodle, toothpicks like I have here, or you can use skewers. Obviously, the first options give you a little more room than my toothpicks do, but again, this is what I have at home. And then you can use beads. Now, again, I'm using this because I have it. You could use Cheerios. You could use buttons. You can use beads. I mean, anything that you feel like you have at home that your child would like to sit and concentrate beading is great to use. And really, this is all there is to this lesson. Um, you just take your beads and you would sit and concentrate putting them down on the toothpick like this. Super simple, but really good again for that concentration, coordination for those little fingers that are going to soon be writing. Uh, a quick tip that I just wanted to pass along for Anyone who has more than one child, even if you have one child yourself, um, an option for keeping your Play-Doh more sanitary, especially in uh, times like these, instead of putting it back into one Play-Doh container after everyone has touched it, divide your Play-Doh up and then give each child their own Play-Doh container. I just happen to have here a little like yogurt cup put that child's Play-Doh in their own cup, their own container, and put their name on it. That way, every time they play, they're using their Play-Doh that they have touched. Again, hoping to just minimize the spread of germs. And another quick tip, I happen to get these little toothpick holders at the dollar store, but for those of my Sweet Pea families who uh, have seen some of my information about posting lessons. This is a great little container. I don't know if you can see, but when you twist the cap, it probably won't work now that I don't have it on the, the bottle, but there's a small little hole right on here. Woo. So if I were to take all these toothpicks out and put the cap back on and turn it so that your child can just thread the toothpicks right back in, now you have a posting lesson also. So a couple little bits of information in this video that I hope you guys find helpful. Um, if you do end up doing this lesson, again, I always love to see pictures and just get responses from you guys about how things are going. So uh, I hope I see you all soon. I hope you are all staying healthy and safe and having so much fun at home. Bye.